Φίλε και φίλοι, καλησπέρα σα. Βρισκόμαστε στο Athens Avenue Hotel και έχουμε τη χαρά και την τιμή να φιλοξενούμε τον προπονητή τη Μπαρσελόνα, τον Σαρούνα Γεσικεβίτσιου. Coach, welcome to Athens. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you for your time. Uh, on many occasions you promised me that at some point we will speak in Greek uh, for an interview, but I guess it's not the time. Even though you, you speak a lot of Greek, you know, at home. Yes, it's not the time. <laughs> Look what we brought you here. Uh, this is the trophy, you know it very well. You lifted it four times, but it's been since 2009. Something then you like touched this, it. Yes. Something like this, yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge goal, obviously, like all of the teams who start the EuroLeague season. And, you know, step, step by step. Okay, so we are in front of uh, your last road game. Uh, uh, and you have secured first uh, place, home court advantage. Uh, regardless of what happens the next uh, few games, uh, let's say that so far mission is accomplished. Uh, I mean, the team has played the way you wanted, responded the way you wanted so far. Yeah, I think uh, we had a very good regular season. Obviously, to finish, uh, you know, first in the in the Euroleague while you playing the ACB is a is a huge achievement. At the same time, you know, uh, at this point we're trying to continue to get better, and uh, the most important right now to come to the playoffs as healthy as possible. We know we're not going to have Higgins, but everybody else we're hoping to have. The <coughs> numbers are saying that you are by far the best team in Euroleague this year. First uh, in assists, free throws and three-pointers percentage, second in offense, third in defense and rebounds. Uh, how tough, especially in this part of uh, uh, this season, is to keep everybody focused and concentrated, you know, for the playoffs and for the final four potentially? Yeah, I think it's very tough because, you know, at this point we are playing 17 game in 35 days. I mean, because of the COVID and because of the, the games, uh, you know, canceled, it's, it, the schedule has been absolutely unbearable. Uh, like I said, uh, at this point we are still a little bit in the survival mode, just getting the games past kind of mode, trying to win them, of course. But I think from next week we have to start focusing on the playoffs. We still have to have hopefully the whole team and, and really getting better because the playoffs is always difficult. You are on your second year in Barcelona's bench and you, you accomplished almost everything, you know, compared to what the team has won before your time in uh, Barcelona. I mean, ACB title, two Copa del Rey title, back to the final, four back to the final after seven and ten years uh, respectively. In our eyes, first of all, uh, it's obvious that Barca needed Sarunas Gesikevicius in order to come back, you know, to success. Uh, in yours, Saras needed Barca in order to win in the highest level? No, I don't really think like this, you know. I think uh, it's very important to find your place. It's very important to find uh, the project. This is what will continue, you know, this is what we will, we will think if we continue working together. It's, it's a project if we can go all in the same direction, you know. At this point, we are very happy. I think, uh, I think we're trying to build and uh, let's see, you know, if, if we can continue doing it as an organization. That's the most important. Let's go to Olympiakos, which you face tomorrow. Uh, and you know it very well as a team. Uh, this is a pretty different team than the last four years. Uh, uh, they are back in the playoffs with home court advantage. Um, and uh, they play really, really good basketball this year, even though they started the season without their uh, leader for almost 11 years, Spanoulis, uh, who retired. Did you expect such a great uh, success for Olympiacos this year? Well, if you remember, I said in the, after, you know, the game two, before I was preparing to Olympiacos, the, you know, that we played very early in the season, I said Olympiacos is back. Uh, before that first game that seemed to be at this point ages ago, I mean, it was very clear that they have a lot of guard play. They have a lot of different options, two different five position players, two different four position players. Uh, you know, uh, three position is well covered. Uh, the creation is covered, shooting is covered. And these guys are playing together for many years. So here, you know, it's very tough in Piraeus with a home court. So you have excellent home court and why not? They have all the ingredients. After Olympiacos uh, or before Olympiacos, there's always a Panathinaikos question. Yeah. Uh, you have a great bond with the Greens, you know, they have a great place in your heart. You've won with them, you make history, you made history with them. Uh, how do you feel by seeing them, you know, uh, being a very different team than they used to be and 
having you know one of the worst records in Euroleague. I f you feel sad, you know, you feel for them, you know how much this uh, fans love their team, you know how much they are uh, very loyal to this team and to see them it's very difficult but obviously things change over the years, you know, you lose the budget, you lose your uh, some kind of balance, you know, you lose the balance from, from top level, you know, down. And things like this happen, you know, they, it's obvious they have to regroup, they have to improve in all the aspects, again, of, you know, the situation going through, you know, like I said, all the pyramids of the, of the team and uh, hopefully they do it. You know, obviously there's a lot of love from, from my side there and I would like to see them back where they belong, you know, in the final fours. When you <coughs> play against Pau with Barca, does Anna have a tough time supporting you? I think I think she supports she, she supports Barca, you know, for sure, 100 percent. But, you know, in, in, in other situations, you know, we are as a family, huge power fans and uh, there's, there's no question about it, you know. But, but now, you know, with all the teams that I had the past through, you know, it's it, it's not easy also sometimes to support. But obviously, power, it's for me, it's the most uh, important team outside of my Jalgiris, you know. Do you think the time has come for Euroleague and FIBA to work together, you know, uh, for planning, you know, a different uh, calendar to... Yeah, the time was 20 years ago. They still haven't done anything. Uh, they still haven't done anything. So it's, uh, you know, it's obvious that I, d I don't believe that they will do something. You know, uh, it's, it's just a horrible situation in, in European basketball. The, the, the window system is absolute disgrace, you know, and... And then obviously they haven't been able to find any kind of solution and, and hopefully they will. But I don't really believe. Last but not least, two different questions, you know. Uh, you recently talked about the Russian invasion, you know, in Ukraine um, and spoke uh, about potentially putting basketball aside, you know, if the Lithuanian government, you know, asks for. Uh, of course, the whole world uh, is shocked about the images of distractions and the uh, victims, you know, uh, the innocent victims, but uh, you guys who came from uh, countries of the former Soviet Union, uh, you have even more reasons, you know, to express your anger and your grief. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, like you said, uh, we grew up in, in that part of the world. We grew up uh, as, a, as a children of, uh, of the former Soviet Union. We know exactly what's going on. Uh, you know, uh, we as Lithuanians, we constantly feel threatened. There's no way, uh, you know, we cannot, uh, we can sit back and, uh, and just take it. You know, in some ways we feel we could be next. Uh, so that's the most important thing and you know we have to stop this guy right now because you know it's obviously putting in a lot of uh, you know uh, like you said yourself you know images and 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 everything they don't really lie and uh, to have this type of situation in 2022 is 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 absolutely horrible and you know all the strength and, and power for the Ukrainians, you know, to, to try to survive. And I hope the whole world continues helping them out because, you know, they deserve to have a place of their own and a country of their own. You have an opinion about how the EuroLeague should handle, you know, Russian club situation for next season? Well, I think, uh, I think you know, the, 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 aggressor, uh, the aggressor country should not uh, participate in, 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 in the normal life situations because they are not giving the normal life situations. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm Lithuanian. I have extremely strong opinions about it, and, and, and that's the way. And, you know, it would be difficult to participate in, uh, for them in EuroLeague while their country is having a direct attack on, on a sovereign country.